Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Well, it's morning here in Alabama, USA. It's Tuesday, May the 12th, and it's 7.16 a.m. And I was just sitting here talking to the Lord about relationships and our relationship with Him. And I got to thinking about all the many people that aren't going to make the first rapture and why. And I figured out, I think I have, have figured out why there's so many good people. I mean good people. Although Jesus says there is none good, no not one. That's the scripture. And many of us will look at upon a person and their lifestyle and what they do and what they don't do and say that's a good person that there's there goes a, that's a good Christian there don't we we tend to judge people by what they do versus what they don't do and decide what kind of Christian they are well it's all a matter of a heart right and I got to thinking about this friend of mine that I I had introduced her to my music minister when I was going to that Baptist church he was our music minister darn good one sang awesome I mean so he would sing a solo during a parts of a song or something or anyway so after her divorce because of her husband was a pharmacist he had an aneurysm and the little girls found him her, her older da young daughter found him on the floor and knew to call either 911 or grandma I'm not sure which but he was watching them you know my friend was at work she was a nurse well anyway still is <laughs> Um, we're both about the same age. Anyway, whoa, why did that darken out? Something. Oh, I guess I got to turn the monster on. Okay. Um, okay, I got to make, make sense out of all this. I'm thinking about the Lord. And what he wants from each of us daily now okay I introduced her after her husband divorced her because he realized he was he was like retarded after his aneurysm he had to go to a rehab place just to learn how to button his shirt and feed himself he was like a child and wasn't able to do things men normally do things like that he 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 got where he was able to live alone his parents put a mobile home in their backyard and he lived there so they were near him anyway he divorced her because he didn't he couldn't stand her not doing everything for him she did not want to undo everything he had learned in rehab okay she was a nurse she knew better so he got mad and he divorced her so here she is with two little girls and because he got a good retirement from whatever pharmacy company he worked for you know she got a child support but still it's not the same and now she's alone well anyway I introduced her to my music minister and his story is something I'm not even going to tell but he was innocent in it and um, they had to go because he was a, a minister of sorts in a Baptist Southern Baptist Church he, it was a big rigmarole 
after I introduced them, they fell in love and wanted to get married. And because they were both married before, they had to go through this big rigmarole. And they even questioned me what I knew about her and different things. Anyway, um, no, no, no. Okay. So they got married. Now they have four children. He had boys. She had girls. Happy marriage. It was, you know, they were great. It, it was wonderful. I was so uh, almost jealous, you know, because they lasted. And until the older daughter became a pediatrician. And now my friend was spending every single weekend babysitting instead of well in the beginning I could get it because when you're in in uh, intern when you're an intern and you're working all those hours you can't afford much they don't pay you much and even in resident school they don't, when you're a resident they don't pay you much so I could get it her wanting to help but once she became a full-fledged pediatrician and got her own business going it should have been time to say look I need every other weekend with my husband that didn't happen and this poor man <laughs> wanting time with his wife was not getting it he wanted to do stuff with her well eventually he divorced her because she could not make time for him even though she loved him are you seeing my point now I think that a lot of people have it in their head because I used to see when you've lived it when you've been there done that you understand the Lord is not satisfied even though you love him if you're so busy with job, kids, husband, you can't make time for him every day, every day, in prayer, praise and worship, and in your word. Doesn't have to be an hour each. The Lord understands life. But, understand this. If you think you're a bride of Christ or want to be even if you're not he wants that intimate time with you every day he wants time with us it's praying praising singing and reading your word for him to speak back to you what he has left for us those are like his love letters to us some people have called the Bible he wants that time with you you can't think well he's got everybody else to love on him today he'll just excuse me today I think that some people m maybe if they even think about it think that well he's got millions of others loving him I I just can't today I have so many things to do I don't know if that goes through anybody's mind or not or maybe they don't even think about it can you imagine loving somebody so much that you died for them and then they commit themselves to you and in the beginning it's all like your newlyweds in love to the person who accepts Christ but then they get busy <coughs> hey 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 Stop it. Stop it. Good boy.
Good boy, lay down. Lay down. Good boy. Uh-uh. He stops for a little while. <laughs> he just can't stand anybody in the hall. Okay. I hope I've made my point. You have to love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And that came from me thinking about a scripture I read yesterday where Jesus was telling the young lawyer, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Let me pull this up because this is what led into this line of thinking and talking with the Lord. Okay, so I have to find the scripture, which gospel it was in. Okay, so... Love your neighbor as yourself. Let's see. Okay, let's try Mark. It might be... No, there is no commandment greater than these. Well, all right, I'll try it. Mark 12:30. Maybe it'll be in my research here. No, it was something I just came upon. Mark 12:30. It was, um, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. No, this is the one where he says, um, one of the scribes came, having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them, he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? I'm going to switch this to NASB. So all of the pronouns are capital. Okay. Which is the which commandment is the foremost of all? Jesus answered, The foremost is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Okay, so that was to a scribe who was obviously Jewish. All right, I'm going to go to Tools for References, Cross References. Um... Oh, come on. There should be Matthew and... Okay, it was where the young lawyer had come to Jesus. Young lawyer. I'm going to try this. Asks Jesus... what to do to be saved, maybe. It's telling me Luke 10, 25. So let's go there. Bear with me. There's a point to this. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, 
and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. Do this, and thou shalt live. Okay, this is not the one I'm looking for. Okay, the answer Jesus gave, and it said a lawyer, a young lawyer, came up to Jesus and asked him, Which commandments must I keep? And he didn't say, Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. He said, Love your... He said... He named some of the Ten Commandments. Not keeping the Sabbath, he said, Honor your father and your mother. You shall not commit adultery. Uh, thou, you shall not murder. Don't you, Thou shalt not steal. And it seems like there was one more. Um, I don't know if it was coveting. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. Commit adultery. Honor your father and your mother. Do these things and you'll do well. Which I found, I thought, now that's really odd. He skipped the first four. It went right in to honor your father and mother. Okay, so anyway, I was talking to the Lord about that. And why didn't he mention the first one about love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. So that's what led into it. And I was thinking about all the people who will do the rest, but don't do the first one because they don't have time. So to summarize this whole thing, I just want to say, remember your first love. Remember how you felt when you first accepted Jesus and you realized in your heart that you were forgiven and that he loves you. He loves you so much that he died for you. You have to think, you have to get this mindset that Jesus died for you. Okay? As much as for me or anyone else, each person is special to him. We're not just this big blob of people that he loves. He loves each person individually. He's able to do that because he is God. I don't understand it. I just know it is. He loves me. So you have to get it in your heart and in your head. He loves me. He loves me me so I have to love him back how do you love someone back if you just got engaged to someone aren't you real excited you're happy you're going to spend the rest of your life with them yay they picked me they love me and you want to call them and you want to text them while you're working and you want to text them on your way home, don't do that. If you're in a car driving. Or you want to call them. Well, not like this. We have cell phones now. People have cars with cell phones. You just push a button. Call Jennifer. I want to talk to her. Or, well, you don't say that. <laughs> or you'll confuse your computer, your AI. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> I hope you got what I was trying to tell you. He loves you. You. Individually. And he wants that line of communication and interaction with you. Alright. I hope I made my point. Remember my friend and her husband. 
her husband got tired of waiting. Oh, if you would equate that with your relationship with the Lord. Are you telling him, I love you, dear. I love you, God. I love you, Jesus. After I do this, I'll spend some time with you. And then it's, oh, honey, I'm so tired. I just can't do it tonight. And you hear that over and over. No time left for me. I'm going to move on. Of course, that's human. But what does that tell God? This person doesn't really love me. That love for me is gone. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, the internet connection, myself, my computer, over each and every one of you, your devices, and your internet connections. And I pray that we do get to stay connected until we're out of here. And I pray that's very, very, I hope it's very, very soon. Because things are moving fast. And not in a good way. I love you all. I say God bless each and every one of you. With that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.